Moving now to Burma, where in August 1988, Menko 9 and Koko let thousands of fellow students, ordinary citizens, monks and civil servants into the streets of Rangoon to protest against the government's military regime. In the bloody crackdown that followed, hundreds of demonstrators were gunned down in broad daylight. Many more were arrested and others simply disappeared as casualties of the failed uprising. For their parts, Menko 9 and Kokoji were hunted down as fugitives, arrested and tortured and sentenced to prison for decades. Now, in their bleakest hours behind bars, Menko 9 and Kokoji probably never imagined that one day they'd receive a hero's welcome in a public ceremony, where some of the very same people who once sided with the regime that turned its gun on them would be applauding them. This month, at the Myanmar Convention Center in Rangoon, that very unlikely scenario came true. The silver jubilee of the 88 uprising that ran from August 6 to 8 was a belated memorial for the nameless dissidents who died on the pavements in Rangoon a quarter century ago. In the past, whenever the anniversary came around, they were remembered in secret with whispered prayers for the souls. This year, Government Minister Ao Min, a retired army officer, and a representative of President Theng Seng's office was in the audience. Aung Min signed a pledge to free all political prisoners. He scribbled, may all your efforts be successful, above his signature. In the weeks leading to the Silver Jubilee, some prominent human rights organizations called for members of the old regime to take responsibility. Burma Campaign UK says President Theng Seng, who was part of the army in 1988, should come clean on his role in crushing 88 uprising. Human Rights Watch also urges Theng Seng to seek justice for 88 victims. One activist group inside Burma decided to boycott the event because military generals who were involved in the killings will be there, they said. But many prominent student leaders with good reasons to resent the ex-army man showed a more conciliatory attitude. Komiya A a former political prisoner himself, said the presence of Minister Wu Aung Min at the 25th anniversary is like the attendance of one of his own comrades. In a panel discussion that includes Aung Min, Koko Ji said, we have to train them, our former enemies, so they are brave enough to listen to our grievances, to the outbursts from our hearts. The next step is to acknowledge that the society's misdeeds led to the sufferings of some. That's the next phase. Then, and only then can we say, we won't hold a personal grudge against you. Let's make a better future for the next generation. Now on Facebook, below a photo of Minko 9 giving the opening speech, Din Thing wrote, it moved me to tears to see them working together despite their differences. But there's one central figure from the 88 crackdown that still invokes universal disgust. That's former military intelligence chief Ken Yun, now a free man running an art gallery in Rangoon. When his photo surfaced on Facebook during the Silver Jubilee, Moji called him war criminal, a monster in military uniform. Menye Tiha said, this Hitler-like person should never be forgiven. So is a simple we are sorry enough? Can students who suffered forgive and forget even if their former foe is not committed to atone for its crimes in a meaningful way? To give us this perspective, we invited Go Wintline, a former student dissident now living in San Francisco. Wenlang was part of the Aung San Suu Kyi's inner circle in the days following the 88 crackdown. If the regime had acknowledged the outcome of the 1990 election in Burma, he would have been a member of the parliament. But instead, the authorities arrested him and sentenced him to 10 years in prison. After he was released, he spent some years at the Thai Burma border working with refugees and dissidents on behalf of the government in exile. He came to the U.S. in 2011. Go Wenlang, welcome to Ling Asia. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you in English, but feel free to answer in Burmese because that's your native language. Oh. How does it feel to be watching from 8,000 miles away the very public way in which the Silver Jubilee of the 88 uprising is being celebrated? Is that really a fitting way to honor the students and your fallen comrades? Uh, the Lumio, the Sibojo Hongi, the Kunai Gabin, and Timapu Dare, 
ပွဲတွေဖြစ်လာတယ်နောက်ဒီပွဲကခန်းလုပ်နိုင်တဲ့အတွက်လည်းပဲဒါတူတဲ့မှုတစ်ခုလိုမျက်မှာတယ်တစ